sitting here listening to this podcast, the, the Lex Friedman podcast. I really enjoy uh, Lex's perspective on things. And, uh, you know, he <clears throat> one of the questions he asks uh, in every single episode of his shows, uh, he always asks the guests, what is the meaning of all this? What is the meaning of life? And there's always so many different types of responses, but the one that I'm listening to now is uh, the guy actually pushes back because he doesn't really like, doesn't, he doesn't, he thinks that's like a loaded question. Uh, and that, that is like, uh, it's, it's not a relevant question, I guess. Uh, my thought is like, okay, well, well, what is the meaning of life? What is, <clears throat> if I had to think like, because that's a tough question, right? I mean, you have to, there's a quick answer maybe. Somebody could say love. I think love is the meaning of life, right? Like, yeah, okay, so there's like a simplified answer, but then if, it's, if you dig a little deeper, what do you, what do you encounter? Um, you know, you think about our lifespan, uh, and you break it out and you say, oh, it's like, you know, maybe 80 years if you're lucky, uh, uh, break that down into, uh, months, break that down into days, you know, it's like, <clears throat> it's a lot, a long time that passes. And I think that if you think about the, what is the meaning of life, it, the weird part that where it gets kind of twisted for me, which I would like to try to explore a little bit is if you ask that question, if I ask that question, what, what is the meaning of life, Cameron? Uh, well then it, it somehow makes me think that like, um, if that, how, how do I word this? Uh, I don't think I'm special enough to have a piece of the universe reserved for me to have a meaning of life. Uh, as in, I don't believe there is a meaning of life. And I think that that question is a way to feed our egos a little bit. Um, that we're important. It was so important, in fact, that there is a meaning and a purpose to all this that, that I'm somehow involved in. <clears throat> I don't... That's, I think, kind of where I sit with it. Uh, I don't know if there is a meaning or a purpose or if we are in a simulation and that I threw myself into this simulation and I gave myself uh, some challenges in this life. You know, I don't know. Time's a funny thing. I, I, I question if time is reality, you know, uh, or if time is a construct. Uh in this world that we are in and you know it's like weird things why well, you know how did I come to that conclusion well since I was a little kid I've always been attracted to, to doing difficult things um, I've always been attracted to some form of adversity or another and uh, which is why I probably was attracted to smoking cigarettes and being addicted to cigarettes at a young age uh, had a lot of reckless uh, unprotected sex, a lot of drug use that was um, just stupid, you know, uh, but also the wanting to have to start from rock bottom, like being drawn to that uh, and overcoming it and turning into somebody successful, which I don't know if I'm successful or not, but certainly not uh, where I was uh, when I started all of this so it was the meaning of life well, I don't I don't know but I know what I've done with my life does that does that life have meaning is all of this even real and I, and I question that even you know because of that because like I feel like okay if, if this let's say let's entertain the idea that this is a simulation well if it is a simulation that maybe there is a meaning and a purpose behind it. Maybe this is like some sort of a psychedelic trip uh, inside that, that we don't actually exist. That we uh, we <clears throat> we come to here and then this is uh, a way to learn some lessons, a way to grow ourselves, uh, <laughs> a way to put ourselves through some hard shit. Well, maybe that's the meaning of life is to is to come here and to maybe it is about love and being uh, learning how to respect. 
uh, people and things. And maybe it is about uh, overcoming adversity and learning how to uh, deal with difficult challenges. And what is your composure like when you deal with those difficult challenges? You know, are you frantic? Are you uh, composed? You know, uh, and, and uh, sentences well thought out before you say them, not just shooting from the hip. Uh, you know, that maybe that's <clears throat> the idea is uh, at the end of this thing, maybe we return back to our natural form and we remember all of this and then we say, well, that was crazy. Okay, let's go. I want to go back to the 1500s and I want to see if I can survive as a pirate. He's like, I, if I could go back in time, I want to go back. I want to go hang out with the hardest fucking people. Like, I want to go see what it was like to try to have to fight off the Vikings and fight off the fucking... Uh, the Mongols, right? I'm attracted to that stuff. Like, how could I over... What could I overcome? What could I achieve? Like, I find myself, like... Uh, <clears throat> from a younger age, being attracted to hard things. Maybe I was because I fell on my head. You know? I, I had brain damage or something. I don't fucking know. I... I think that... Uh, what is the meaning of life? I don't think that there there is a meaning of life, but I believe that if we are in a simulation, that maybe there is something we're supposed to be doing, you know? Uh, but that's if we're in a simulation. Now, we might not be in a simulation. There's a, there's a good argument for and against, you know? Uh, certainly people who are uh, really religious are probably not going to believe in that. They're probably going to want to argue back that their truth is that this place was created by God but if this place was created by God and there's a plan laid out and there's a purpose and a meaning behind all of this uh, well couldn't God just really be an engineer of the simulation and uh, isn't that just the same thing <clears throat> I think maybe I don't know so maybe the people who are religious they try to argue against it but maybe they're, they're, they're not arguing against that they're just arguing against the the, the words that we use to describe it. But maybe inherently it's the same thing. Okay. Well then, a part of me then also should probably, if I'm going to believe that there's a simulation theory, then also then I should probably believe that there's a God. It could be the same thing. Maybe it's not some omnipotent, um, what's that word? Om, omnipotent? Ah, omni omnipotent. Uh, being that, you know, uh, controls and everything and, and, uh, and, and sees everything that you do and is, has a, a cast of judgment on you when your days are over. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't know if that's true, but maybe, <clears throat> maybe there is some truth to that, to that. If, uh, especially if we dove ourselves into the simulation, uh, on purpose, you know, uh, what a fucking mind fuck, really. Uh, I say a lot driving to work, going to this prison, I hate going to this freaking prison, I hate, I hate, uh, yeah, dislike this job site very much, so I listen to these podcasts on the way, and, uh, it gets my brain thinking, you know, I don't know, it's a funny, uh, it's a funny question, and I'm, and I'm sure, you know, if I, if I thought about it a little harder today, I could have a completely different answer for the, for the question, you know what I mean, it's just probably one of those things that there's many layers to, to that question, I don't believe that it's just a simple answer, you know, like, uh, what is the meaning of life, love, you know, I don't know, I, I don't know that that's, I don't know if that's a good enough answer, but maybe it is, maybe it all, this crazy long equation with all these variables and it could all just be simply reduced to the idea and the thoughts and the power of love, maybe, love's a funny thing. I have a, I have a really good friend, and uh, and this is where you learn that you have uh, suffered some form of trauma in your life, right? These are the effects of trauma on people. I have a really good friend who was one of my, uh, he was my one of my first bosses when I moved here, and uh, I don't think he liked me very much when he when he met me uh, originally, and then uh, after he worked with me for a while. Uh, started to like me, right, of course, I work really hard, uh, 
I've always uh, I've always been like that. So if people, if you don't like me at first, work with me for a while, and let's try to get a job done together. And I promise you, you will like me at the end of it because there's uh, not too many people I know that will work harder to accomplish the task. Um, so we've we've uh, we've known each other for shit twelve years now. He was uh, like I said, one of my first bosses when I first moved here. We've worked together. He got uh, he moved companies, got laid off actually, and moved to another company. I followed him. That's kind of how much I care about him. You know, he's he means the freaking world to me. Uh, a great friend, a great mentor. Uh, he taught me a lot about being a good man. Taught me a lot about uh, you know, even though it sucks and you don't want to do it, to fucking do it anyway. Uh, taught me a lot about how to. Uh, you know, play by the rules, you know, because you're supposed to play by the rules, I think, uh, with something. I think maybe not with everything, but I think uh, the rules can be bent sometimes because, uh, I don't know, the hypocrisy that uh, comes from the rule enforcers. But that's another conversation for another day. Uh, the, the point that I'm making here is that a couple of years ago, he told me that he said he told me he loved me when he hugged me. We always hug each other when we say goodbye. We're good. We're great friends. And it it was almost painful to hear him say that. Like I felt a physical pain in my chest when he said that. I was, I was hurt. And I was like, well, what the fuck? I and I love him. I do love him. But the, for whatever reason, I'm so disconnected from being able to embrace that emotion that it's actually fucking painful for me to hear those words. Physically painful, even. It's very strange. And, uh, you know, I've been seeing my therapist for a while. <laughs> and we've been working on a lot of that stuff. Working on uh, figuring out, getting to the bottom of why it is that I feel like that, you know. And uh, whatever the whatever the, the stemming of those problems, wherever the, it, it stems from, it originated from some form of trauma at some point in my life. I don't know what. Maybe I have daddy issues or maybe I have mommy issues or whatever the case may be. Uh, I don't know yet. Uh, I think it's probably highly unlikely that those, those things are the, are the reason behind it. But um, I think that... It's, it's weird. So I addressed it with him at one point, and I said, "Hey, listen, I love you too, man. But you should also know that I'm broken. Like this makes me feel really uncomfortable when you say that to me. But I'm working through it, and I don't want you to stop saying that. That's how you feel. And I've worked through saying I I love you back. And it and every single time I got we had lunch uh, yesterday. Same as always, we catch up. Uh, I know he's a He's a big fan of a lot of the things that I'm doing, and he shows it, and and uh, and I love it. But at the end of this conversation, the end of this lunch that we're having, I know, and I have to mentally prepare myself because I know he's going to tell me that he loves me. And I though my like I've <laughs> I I don't know if I can express how much this man means to me, but why why in fact do you have that uh, relationship? Uh, with so much love, but when the man says he loves you, it fucking hurts. So I know it's coming. And then yesterday he said it in a different way. He said it with more expression. He said it with more emphasis. I believe he even used uh, a, a term to describe it on a, on a, how much more. You know, dude, I don't think you understand how much I love you. Is is basically what he was getting across. And I, well, I fought back to tears. Uh, and then I turned around, I walked away, and then I felt it in my chest, and I got kind of puffed up, and uh, the tears came to my eyes, and uh, breathed in, breathed out, on my way I went, I was good to go after that, but that fucking sucks, you know, so when I hear things like, oh, maybe the meaning of life is love, I'm like, well, what is love, because love could be a complicated fucking thing sometimes, and it can make you feel all kinds of different ways. Well, you know, it was weird when my wife told me she loved me the first time. I think I told her to go to sleep. She was drunk or something. I, I said, just shut up and go to sleep or something. Because the word makes me feel uncomfortable. And then, and, but, I, but, I, but I know the emotion. 
But for whatever reason, when somebody expresses love to me, it's, it hurts. It's painful. It's, uh, yeah, actually, I don't know that I've ever been able to express that as good as I just did. I should probably send this to a fucking therapist, actually. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, what is the meaning of life? I don't know. I don't know. I, what am I going to do with my life? I'm going to continue to strive for excellence and push, uh, <clears throat> push myself to be better always and do more and be smarter about it. And, uh, you know, I want to run a hundred miles at some point. Uh, I think I can do it. Um, I can't do it right now, but I feel like if I keep working the way that I'm working and allowing myself to recover, giving myself periods of time off, working my ass off when I do work, uh, keep the long runs up and always be working with people who are better than me, I think I'll hit 100 miles by next year. And that's exciting because then it's like, well, what's after that? But we'll figure out what's after that after we get to that because that's, uh, that's going to be a tough one. All right, this video is shit. 16 minutes long? That seems fair. That's a that's a nice amount of time, I think, uh, for some thoughts on my uh, Friday morning drive to work. Tomorrow morning, we got a <clears throat> 5 a.m. ruck out at the lake. Uh, we're going to stop every half mile for push-ups and squats. And I may even add in some uh, shoulder, some presses, too. We might, we might uh, pass that kettlebell around and throw in some shoulder work, too, you know. Uh, and then, uh, so yeah, every half mile we stop for PT, we go out two and a half miles, we come back, it takes about two hours. It's real tough. And then Sunday I'm linking up with my friend Simon again, and we're going back out to Lake Georgetown. We're going to go run that thing again. Uh, last week we got it done in, uh, just under six hours. I think we can beat that. Uh, you know, if we can shave five minutes off that time, that would be, that would be pretty dope. And then slowly start working our way down, you know, to five and a half hours, five hours, four and a half hours. The record out there is three hours and five minutes. And uh, that's fucking insane. That's fast. That's fast. That's almost a, a qualifier for the Boston Marathon on uh, some of the most rugged terrain you can imagine running on. So whoever ran that is is my freaking hero. So, yeah. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, we're going to I'll try to keep everybody updated on what I'm doing. I am uh, <clears throat> trying to record my experiences more with this. I, I'm terrible about uh, logging what I do and logging my journey. And it's and I feel like there's probably a lot could be learned here because I go through so many trials and tribulations, man. I go through so much fucking hard times with this. It's not easy. So for people who think that all the shit that I do is like, Oh, it's, you don't do, it's easy for you. It's really hard for me. That ain't fucking easy for me at all. Not even a little bit. It's incredibly hard. And that's the point is to overcome that incredibly hard. Um, and that is not easy. It's always hard. It's never easy, never easy, but very rewarding. So yes, uh, races next month. We got the ruck and the run. I'll try to log a little bit, try to record a little bit of it. I'll get my kid to make some video of us, uh, you know, doing some of the stuff we're doing and just try to put some more shit up here so people can see what we're doing and try to spread the, uh, spread the information, spread the energy, spread the momentum and get more people moving and doing hard stuff. Cause this is, uh, you know, it's uh, therapeutic in and of itself. So yeah. All right. Fuck. Now we're getting up to 20 minutes.